What's up everyone? We are back for another video. Today is going to be the review and ride of, well, this is technically the video number two because I, the first video, the sound was messed up. I had some music going in the background and uh, I had some people um, that were saying, complaining that the video was, was a little messed up. So sorry about that guys. After I posted it to YouTube, I didn't realize it was happening. So here's the new one. It's been raining and like crazy um, everywhere, flash flood warnings and everything. It's going to be a long time before we can ride. The Kingsville Classic got canceled. That's going to be pushed to a later date. Um, we'll keep you informed on when that's going to be. But for now, we're going to be the, the ride, ride and review. And I've had a lot more time now to really ride it and um, get a little bit better perspective on uh, how the bike uh, is on different trails, um, stuff like that. So I'm going to break this down into some different categories. Like one of them is going to be the climbing. So the climbing. Uh, even though it's an e-bike, it climbs really efficiently, I feel like. Uh, it has a lot of the same um, characteristics and uh, geometry as my uh, YT Capra. I think it's probably in the same same category, all mountain enduro style uh, bike anyways. Um, so the pedal efficiency is great. Um, I don't feel like I'm cramped on the bike. I got a size large. Um, I wrote a size, I have a size large on the Capra as well. Um, I do know that these are like, these bars are slightly um, more narrow than my Capra's. Um, I know that doesn't really have anything to do with the size, oh, man, but <laughs> it's it's uh, a little bit more narrow than when I got on this bike the other day. I was like, wow, these are wide. But anyways, um, you could always change those out. But um, the descending, the descending is is uh, it feels like a regular bike to me. I mean, this is a little heavier, so um, I know certain like rock gardens and stuff like that where it's real physical. It makes you a little bit more tired. You're hanging on trying to muscle around a bike. It's, you know, a little heavier, but it holds momentum yeah. through a lot of sections more than a regular bike does. You don't get bounced around as much through certain rough stuff, but otherwise than that, it feels like a regular bike to me. Um, the range and mileage and elevation gain, it's, I found it's kind of hard to really gauge that because it's just so many different variables. I mean, if you're doing a trail that you're climbing up and it's kind of technical and it's only like 2700 feet of climbing for that particular ride you're probably going to be in the red you're going to be down to probably two bars maybe even one bar um, like the trail 007 which I have a bunch of videos of those um, matter of fact I just did one um, and so that's a more flat easy fire road climb up to the top so you can get all the way to the top and still have maybe only really use one bar or maybe two bars get down to like three and uh, you know you still got you can play around at the top a little bit um, but if you're climbing up a trail that's steep and more technical you're going to be using you got to you got to look at it as like on a regular bike if you're climbing up a technical trail it's going to take more energy for you to climb up it so the bike's going to use more juice to get you up it so kind of kind of common sense there but so it's kind of hard to gauge um, the distance on it but um, I've gone about 22 miles and about 2700 feet of climbing uh, I would imagine if you were to go like a lot of flat flatter trails more cross-country type oh, stuff you probably get a lot more mileage out of it um, this the kind of riding that I do is more enduro style so it's you know, you're going up and you're bombing down. A lot of times it's steep trails. So the most I got, I think, is when I went to do pipeline. I think we did two laps on pipeline trail. Ended up to be like, or no, it was flow trail. It was like this, I think that was the first trail I actually rode this on, actually. Or maybe the second trail, I'm not quite sure, but we got 31 or 3,200 feet of climbing. I still had two bars, but those trails out there are pretty steep too, so you know, it's really hard to, to gauge it, but overall performance of it, um, if you're a heavier guy, I would, you know, the battery um, life might be an issue. I rode, I go between trail and eco most of the time. I very rarely use boost, only like in my last video, I just boosted up to the top real quick because I knew I wasn't going to ride much. That was my last run, so I just got to the top really quick, but um, you know, you might get a shorter life. Now, the YT does have their uh, 720 amp hour battery, I think it is. 
and uh, I'm on the mail list myself, uh, the email list for when it's one's available, but every time one's available, they're gone and they're, they take a while for them to come in stock. Same thing with the, even the, five, the 540 that comes stock on these things is uh, hard to get a hold of. So that's, that would be, wouldn't be a bad issue if you were able to have a backup battery. Say you wanna go ride somewhere for a couple days, charge up both batteries, bring them with you. You can ride all, all day practically, especially with the 720. Um, but you know, it, it's a great bike. I, I have no complaints with it. Now I will say that that's the only bike that I've ever, e-bike that I've ever ridden. So I can't say that, I mean, I've demoed some bikes in parking lots or whatnot, but I've never actually gone and went on a mountain with another bike, mountain bike or e-bike. So I will say that, but what I can say for the, um, now the price was, uh, just under eight grand. It was like 7,700 or something like that. Now I got the little bottle that comes with the, that doesn't come with it. It's a little add on. It's a little $50 bottle. It's a tiny little thing. It's a joke. Uh, but you know, you're on an e-bike, so I guess you're not using as much energy, but still it would have been nice to have a bigger water bottle cage. And it's just, I feel like it's a YT thing. That's, that's really my only gripe with YT is their design of the, the bottle cages. They've never been really bottle friendly. They've either, either had a, you gotta buy their specific bottle or you gotta get one of those aftermarket ones that go underneath the down tube, which never even work right. Um, I've tried a few different ones. They just, it gets muddy from the tire and stuff like that, but um, you know, that's my only complaint with it. It's it's really a great, great bike. Um, the, the, the still as YT, they're always um, like good at getting good high quality components for the price. I know if you were to buy a specialized, uh, like an Evo or a Levo, and you got all Fox suspension, Fox 38 Elite, you know, Performance Elite, all that stuff would cost you anywhere from 10 to 12, 13 grand, maybe even more. And the, the I got the carbon frame one. It's carbon frame here. Not sure how much that actually helps with weight, um, but it wasn't too much more than from the aluminum one. And I like the way carbon's a little bit quieter for me than aluminum. It's not as chattery. Uh, and uh, my buddy has the uh, Canyon Torque. It's aluminum and it's 27.5. I believe it's a small frame. And uh, my bike's slightly lighter than his, so I guess it does help. Um, and the brakes, the Kodar brakes it comes with, I love Kodar brakes. They are always consistent, they're very powerful. They remind me a lot of Moto brakes. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a good thing. Would I recommend this bike? Yes, I highly recommend this bike, especially this particular build. Uh, it's the MX model, 27.5 in the back and 29 in the front. I really like it because I came from 29 inch wheels off my capper here. That's all I've ever known. So with the 27.5 in the back, I feel like it's a little more playful, especially in berms and corners. You just kind of just throw it around a little bit better. It, you don't have to worry about tire buzzes too. You get a buzz on your gooch, that's that's never fun. Uh, I don't get that with this bike. I get it on the capper occasionally. It's a couple of times I've almost crashed because of it, but um, yeah, uh, it, it's a great bike. I, I'd say, get it. Um, they just came out with the 2023 models. I should have waited a little longer to get this one because the price dropped on those uh, like crazy. I think it went down to 5,000 or something like that just to get rid of them. But you know, it is what it is, but um, we're very happy with the purchase. And I think that it's a, uh, it's a great bike. I can't wait to ride it around um, every trail. So far I've done most trails, but it's just a good, good thing to have. Great thing to have. I still have my regular bike. I wouldn't say get rid of a uh, mechanical bike because they they have their purposes. But um, yeah, guys, that's um, pretty much the video. It's a short one, um, but stay tuned, guys. I'll keep you posted on the Kingsville race for next time. Thanks a lot, guys. Subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you on the next one. I knew I should have gone that line. Overshot. Me.